Yay. Hello, everyone. Hello, world. I just got done with a viciously intoxicating round of cultural appropriation, so you'll have to forgive me if my commentary is slightly less intelligent or intelligible than usual. Is this the PS PlayStation 1 version? Yes. Mm-hmm. And that's why, uh, uh, yeah. yeah when the world came the, down, the yeah. religion had come to life. We built... Wait, there's levels? Yeah. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. So they took a classic arcade game and actually made it. They created a campaign for it and it didn't suck. No, it's great. Now, Wally wasn't one of the usual heroes. In fact, he wasn't a hero at all. He was just a simple bean counter. But when you're asked to save the world, you don't ask why. You just make it happen. I have to play the Pac-Man game for the N64 sometime just because of this. <laughs> have you I seen wanna... that? I have not. I want to play the the remake of Pong again, because that one, they added mouse control, and it's really, really good. And I got <laughs> almost to the end, and then something happened, and I couldn't keep playing. Kill them all! Oh, so I have so to use the bot mechanics in it. So, um, do you cycle through the alternate modes of fire, or is it done by a power up? Uh, you know, my thing is that when this game came out, everyone reviewed it like it was a third person shooter. It's so probably what? because of the third person camera perspective. Ah, come on.
because you did show a little bit before that it does have an alternate perspective for the camera. Going on. Uh, Rain is playing some centipede. Yep. You know what I'm doing? What? <laughs> I'm, I'm eating a barbecue. I'm eating a barbecue chicken pizza with hot sauce. That sounds really good. It's fucking dope. Oh. Oh. Oh, God. It's so good. It's like my mouth is fucking orgasming, bruh. Oh. Mm. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the most disgusting thing you will probably hear tonight. Congratulations! Yes! <laughs> mm. But seriously, this was like the greatest thing ever. <laughs> Yeah, the other 64 Pac-Man was called Mrs. Pac-Man Maze Badness, and it was bizarre. <laughs> it was like a puzzle adventure game with Pac-Man mazes thrown in and whatever, 3D. You're going to have to show me. Yeah, I will. I played a bit of a GameCube Pac-Man adventure game. And this weird Genesis point-and-click Pac-Man Cycler <laughs> adventure. Yeah, that was that the same one as the Pac, Pac World for the SNES? No, it was Pac Man 2 The New Adventure. What I want to know is is there another. Is that a sequel to the original Pac Man or is it. Is it a sequel to. Is there another game like it on the Genesis or something? No, no, Pac-Man 2 The New Adventure. I know that one. For the SNES? I had on the Genesis. It was like side-scrolling, and you yeah. would... You couldn't actually tell Pac-Man what to do, he'd just walk in a straight line. And then you'd interact with the scenery in order to make the scenery do things to him. And that's how you'd play the game. Oh, come on. No wonder yeah, it's that so one. bizarre. That was really weird. Yeah. Like, you didn't know. No wonder I couldn't figure out what to do. It was completely different. Because it's not a very common approach to gameplay. I can play that too. You can do a weird Pac-Man day where you play that and Maze Madness. Maze Madness is really cool. Yeah, you can have some really catchy music. Forgive me for sneezing. Uh, it's fine. Thank you. Have you ever played the original System Shock? No. Ooh, you gotta play it. You've played the original System Shock? Yes. <laughs> I haven't beaten it yet, but um, it is fun. I like how there's um, cyberspace environments where you're floating through um, a um, wireframe space and shooting at um, 3D viruses and stuff. This game is trippy weird. What the heck? Again. Hey Rain, we got jumped into a um, dog right um, tweet thread. <laughs> Even though dog right was a thing, but it's no surprise that Mr. Shikaki is involved. Hug. <laughs> Master himself. <laughs> ah, crap. 
Watch out for the spiders. Also watch out for the centipedes. Anything else that can kill you. Watch out for the death. Ah, uh, darn it. Everything's trying to kill you, Rain. Everything. Besides from death. He More is, death. He is riding around shooting giant insects? Yes. Wait, do you have those flying things that you have to launch Yes. Yes. Wait, what the heck? I know, right? Yeah, we're on level 2 and already they're adding enemies to work in the original game. <laughs> I remember there's a Frogger game that I had for the Game Boy Color that was also like this. Like, the first level was like the original Frogger, but every level after that we had more and more mechanics. Uh, I should play that on my Retro Freak and stream it. I got a Retro Freak, and I can stream it. Cool. Actually, Retro Freak may not play it very well. If Retro Freak doesn't have the code in this database, the, the game checks out. I have the actual cartridge and I plugged into my Retro Freak. It's like, I don't know what game this is. What the heck? I've never seen anything do that before. But it did, did produce a rip of it. I guess I should take the rip and take a check some of it and see if the rip actually is right. <laughs> This kind of has that uh, en environmental rotation thing going on, much like how, uh, much like how Contra 3: The Alien Wars handled its top-down levels. Crap. There we go. Oh, come on. Poisonous mushrooms. Good grief. This is like totally trippy. It's great. But yeah, man, this gives me so many ideas for things we need to stream. Can you believe it? I did beat it. Not bad. Although I kind of had to look up a guide in order to figure out and I had how to handle one small boss fight. One of them died. One of what died? You'll see. The elves he's trying to rescue. They're called we people, I think. Oh, shoot! Yeah, I think I shot him. <laughs> this is like, whatchamacallit, that... Jet Force Gemini. 
Did you ever play Jet Force Jedi? I don't think so. You were trying to rec rescue these little, like, koala teddy bear looking things, but if you could, instead of rescue them, you could shoot them and then they'd explode in gory chunks. <laughs> that sounds great. So this is level three. Yeah. So the multi-shot arms only last a certain number of shots or a certain amount of time. Depends on which one. Okay, so the one that shoots out in all directions, like radiantly, that's a number of shots. The one that makes you shoot like an arc cone thing, that's a number of times, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, anything interesting on the internet today? Uh, oh, really? yes. Oh, the entire contents of background emails. This stream is now banned in France. <laughs> no, I actually don't know how French law works in the parts of that. It seems really weird. Crap. Proof that the frogs don't actually like their assistants being formed and that we need to gas them. Yeah. Oh, sake, Are those carrots? No. <laughs> they look like carrots, but what are they? Four bugs. Ah. Uh, so basically they come through the mushrooms and shit. And buildings. Oh dear. So you definitely need to make sure they die. But doesn't cutting through the mushrooms kind of help you though? Uh, yeah. I don't get points when they do it. Uh, okay. I just remember in the original centipede for the arcade, you kind of had to clear the mushrooms or else the centipede would be way too fast. But you had to clear them in the right pattern because then you could kite the centipede down straight and it would let you shoot it easily. Did I just play level 4 or level 3? Because it was level 3. Okay. Oh yeah, I did. City of Wall. Build that wall. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> God damn it, why is there Cars 3 coming out? What the fuck? It mean it, it's already coming out. No, that was planes. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Also, I noticed that the vertex wobbles are particularly bad in this game. It has uh. it's okay. The vertex wobble. Do you remember how I said PlayStation games always seem to have the wobbly vertexes? This doesn't seem to be that effective by it. Maybe it has partly to do with um, the way the camera perspective is. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It does have a from behind third person perspective, though. Crap. I don't really have much room to we're operating here. Nope. Are there checkpoints in the levels? Yes. Probably a variation can be just in my head. Of course you do. I've been culturally appropriating like a motherfucker tonight. So do any of you own any Sims of Solar Empire games? Probably not. Let me check my Steam library. I don't know. I don't remember if it was Steam or the dog, though. I think they're compatible. Uh-oh. No, I don't. got destroyed. Hello, new viewer, whoever you may be. I 
I do know which side the sleeping is going to come from next. No. What's that? That's right. That sounds hard. It's... He's played through this a bit before, so he probably has some general idea. Oh, this is the first video game I ever played. <laughs> oh, it is? That's interesting. Yeah. But the first one I ever played was Mario Kart 64. The first one I played would probably be Mega Man 1 through an NES Java emulator in my browser. Wow. Yep. I know the first one I played was Kirby Street 2. And I got that along with a, a new Game Boy Pocket, which. Keep my pocket is incredible. <laughs> oh, boss fight. Hey. Boy. Was the Game Boy Pocket a pocket version of the original Game Boy? Or? Yes. Alright. Because there was, a there was also a miniature version of the Game Boy Advance that had a similar name. Yeah. yeah. The Game Boy Pocket was like the. It was a bit smaller, but not much than the Game Boy Color. And it had a bigger screen, but it was a uh, grayscale instead of the green scale of the original. Oh, wait, I meant Game that Boy. there was like a smaller version of the Game Boy. Yeah. Color. I've seen that with the screen. <laughs> Were you reacting that way to the FMV sequence there? Uh, no, I'm just noticing that Tommy Wasaw has got another movie out, apparently. Oh. No! Yep. Oh. No. He did not! He did not! That's that Dude, there's a more frogger to almost everything. Yeah, but frogger for the N64 was a thing like this. Where it was... It was not just regular levels, it was like more like what you would call it levels, where you had big old levels, big level things. It's called Frogger 2. Ah, so basically open ended level design where you explore map and do stuff. Yes. Maybe it's dead. It must be. I shot at it.
Wait, Frogger 2 was an unreleased prototype for the N64. What oh. did I know that people played Frogger 2 Okay, so I had Frogger 2 for... Okay, the PlayStation. That can't have all been it. The Dreamcast, that's what it was. Apparently it wasn't a very good game, it didn't get very good reviews. <laughs> But I had the, the Game Boy Color version. The Game Boy Color version, I enjoyed. Even though it had absolutely nothing to do with the other versions. Should I do that again? Not even terribly. Thank you. <coughs> Up to you. Okay, yeah, I don't know here. what that went to tell you. Wait, there's a Dreamcast version? Of what? Centipede. This is. Is the, there? I don't know, this is the, the PlayStation 1 version. The PC version was the first video game I ever played. Is there a Dreamcast emulator for the PC? There is. There's a couple of them. Is there any that are really good and can run the games off the original discs? Uh, no, because the original discs weren't actually regular CDs. Oh, okay. The original discs were... I think they called them gd ROMs. They were one gigabyte oh, on the normal CD surface. And only a few PC discs could actually read them. Also, it's a pri per oh, proprietary version of the CD format. Yes. It was okay. close. It was close enough that a few, like I said, a few, I think they're by LT, mostly a few normal CD drives could read them in your computer, and then you could actually burn a uh, dream. If you could squeeze the one gigabyte down to 800 megabytes, uh, by cutting things off the disk, or if the disk was small enough already, you could burn it to a regular CD and put it in your Dreamcast, and your Dreamcast would just play it. Which meant that its copy protection was one of some of the worst ever invented. <laughs> uh, their copy protection was essentially no one will ever be able to afford a CD burner. <laughs> yeah. I heard you could also put like Dreamcast games in a CD player and listen to the soundtrack. <laughs> they, they would have to have included that on their own. But yeah, yeah, there was one for the Dreamcast. The one for the Dreamcast is, is similar in format to this, but it looks like it's a slightly different game. And this uh, is the PlayStation version. I'm not sure that I need to do it side by side. We're live. Hey, Feb, did you hear that uh, Macron got the, got the Podesta email treatment? Oh. Macron, the candidate competing against uh, oh, Lit yes. Men. Yes, and I also heard that they are now saying it's you who talk about you know what France now. Yes. Just prior to the election. Yes. Do they think that that's going to actually fucking work? They are going to find people. That's what they're threatening to do, is find people. But I'm telling you, the strice of the fact is not going to let that happen. <laughs> WikiLeaks still says that there's no chance that Macron's, that, uh, Macron's going to lose even with these leaks. And they say that they can't be found any, they're still with you, they haven't found any signs of fear yet. Yep. And Macron admitted to being hacked. Okay, so Fallen Nova says that the Dreamcast version is a superior port. Mm. So. You know what's one thing that I almost was tempted to pick up but didn't get a chance to? Uh, there was like a, a 3DS uh, centipede game that came out uh, a few years ago. All of a sudden it was showing up in a lot of places used and I wish I had bought it because I heard some interesting reviews I about think, it. I think there's some at Walmart. 
Ah, but that's your Walmart down south, at the Walmart and around my area. Okay. It, it, Fair just, it, it depends, right? Uh, in Kanukistan, Walmarts, depending on which neighborhood you're in, it could either be stocked with the best stuff, or half the shelves will be bare for some mysterious reason. <laughs> Fair. So why does, uh, what do you think I don't think they said that he's gonna win per se, I just they said that he was having an impact. Um. They said he's gonna win because he has a 13 point lead, and they don't think this will change that. Um, I, I, and you'll excuse me when I say I believe that I will believe uh, when I see it more of a bunch of lion shits that make up the polls to begin with. Cute, Grandma. Also, daily reminder. Daily reminder that the CIA has been busted in messing with French elections in the past. And so, if Mark Hunt wins, I'm declaring it a CIA spoof. But, hey, you know, you should, I should because... Run. Actually, there's yes, one other thing. Okay. Actually, there's one other thing I was going to add as well. Um, one thing that I suspect happened with the Trump election, which is probably going to be happening in a lot of Western elections, is a lot of people who want to side with the conservative candidate are never going to tell bolsters anything. Because why would they? You know, it's because you know, the people who are going to be for the most open candidate naturally are going to go, well, of course I'm going to vote for them. Uh, uh, uh. Look at this amazingly comfortable lead that it shows in the polls and they never show up to the polls. I mean, it might so be the Fallen Dover has a warning for you. They say, oh, I remember this for the Yes, it's called Centipede Infestation, and it's there's a ton of bad reviews, and it's one of the last games Atari ever produced. Uh, but, but they gave that game a Western anime. Maybe it's a hidden gem. Who knows? Alright, yeah, gave her all the information. I. <laughs> Give him the perp. Come on down. The funky cow. Hi, Graham. You're live. Welcome aboard, Grant. Well, it's semi run off to until Hager figures out how to fix all the uh, tagging nonsense again. It, it's, it's just we needed somewhere to stream from that uh, was less distracting. So we can put the little chat up there and see what's up. <laughs> but you see, the really awesome thing is... Anyhow, now, welcome. But the more awesome thing is, because of this uh, new name, um, it doesn't have any of the baggage anymore, weirdly enough. So, you can't really get screwed with this much. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's the weird thing. I work wonders for, uh, for, for what is it, uh... Change your fault? I was gonna say turn it down for it. <laughs> yes, Grant? <coughs> How'd you make new team speak servers? Well, you need to buy a server. Or rent a server. Like actually a physical server, and then it's still software. Software is free, as long as you're not trying to run a professional install server. Then it costs money. Okay. 
yeah, you can get it for different prices depending on what type of service you need. If you don't care about what port you get, it's much cheaper. But I actually just got a full server, which is five dollars a month. Full, full server. I can run more stuff on it than just a single type of server. I can set up a lab house, an IRC server, whatever the heck I wanted on it. Fun. He can do contractual work for the NSA. <laughs> Well, let's be honest, the only thing that we've learned, I think, in the past few decades or so is that it's coming it's looking more and more that the whole purpose of our surveillance system is to not actually do anything with the surveillance information, just to basically lord it over people in person saying, oh, we might have this on you. You know how to look it up? Hey, that reminds me, I need to make huge edits to these channels. I forgot to turn on voice and you, you all go and talk about the NSA made me think that I should probably turn that on. Oh, cool. Well, that happens. Oh, Wait, which wife which waifu are you arguing about in Teen Titans? Um I think he said something about Starfire. Did he say something about someone raping trash? He said Raven's trash. Oh, Raven's trash. Fighting words. <laughs> oh, and what are the people who like both, Gremlin? They are a fucking freak, you say. <laughs> you see, you have to look at it this way, right? You see, the whole purpose of Starfire is Starfire is the girl you want, but you don't have to acquire a lot of game skills to get her. She's also the comic relief, or one of them at least. And basically, Raven is the one every guy kind of wants, because deep down inside, they want a woman that they can pursue. That's the trick. <laughs> you say that now, but eventually you're gonna want to go for Raven because you want the game. You want the hunt. That sounds like something that they say on TRP. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I and oh, he and his three legs are nice. <laughs> there you go, there's some positive. Yeah, what a difference three years makes. <laughs> Yeah, but she's hyper amorous. She's been with everybody. <laughs> ah, you like that absolute territory, eh, Grandma? Oh, hey, Energy is here. Hey. Hi, Welcome, Energy. Hey. We're live. We're super live. Okay. There's some centipede going on. Yep, the PlayStation group is centipede. Oh, you, you know what yep. would improve Raven's character design? Absolute territory. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Fucking spiders. <laughs> God damn it, can't. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Hang in there, Ray. Darn it. Yeah, sorry the uh, podcast went so long. Jesus, I was not expecting that. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, oh, which one? Uh, oh, Bone Angels. It's uh, the one I do on Friday nights. Oh, yeah. Yes! Oh, give it a ping. Awesome. Oh, shit. Yeah, bugs. Gotta watch out for the bugs. Well, you are getting pulled by a lot of beetles and mosquitoes. And there's also, of course, the centipedes themselves. You know, in the animated series Teen Titans, I feel like the, the original. But I feel like with the lineup that they had, Starfire and Raven ends up being the strongest characters. With the second being Cyborg. Uh, well, given that one's an alien and the other's a telepath kind of figure. Yeah, I heard like, about that phone. Like, they, uh, in Go, they did an episode where it was girls versus boys, but it was like, you know, it's Starfire and Raven versus Cyborg, Beast Boy, and uh, Robin, which is like a blowout. <laughs> 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 Cyborg well, being like their only one that actually would be a possible threat for them. So, so yeah, the Robin so was trained by Batman, so... Dad, donating $500 to Trump's campaign, yeah. Oh, I did, yeah. Man. You find a cop about a lot of them, because they have very conservative parents. So, I don't have you, you're a cop parents. Like, didn't Alex and so, Shins have a, uh, an arms dealer? Is, is, is yep, 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 yep. yep. You're an arms company. And I can... <laughs> and I suspect... I'm not and I suspect that with the uh, old Lipschitz, though, was that, uh, because of the business his dad was in, he was probably hanging around someone like Zoe, and his dad was just throwing money at him in a keep your hands off the fucking family business <laughs> sort of thing. I can see that happen. You know, he's like a shitty, that's like he's a shitty son in a rich, you know, neocon business. You don't want him handling any of the family dollars. There's a better chance that he would hire and his dad would just one day show up outside Kepler's house and say, You're not hired! <laughs> you know, my other company's sons got killed in the light of duty of their job. I can't let anyone else in the family handle this. Or that he's gonna blow all the money on these really stupid chicks from San Francisco. <laughs> well, what was what was Macintosh's story? Did Macintosh have some history with that, too? Yeah, oh, yeah. Macintosh yeah. had some conservative parents that wouldn't fucking beat him when he deserved it. Instead, they let him run around and do whatever the fuck he wanted. He saw 9-11 happen, and it was like, whoa, this made me so Yeah, he saw 9-11, like, I'm gonna go on a tour. <laughs> I'm gonna go on a tour yep. of the world. And he went and he saw a whole bunch of places, and he was like, Western imperialism, then, yeah. This may be yeah. so low. Well. He lost his mind. Oh, yeah, my all God. God. Although it's not like all he knew enough to actually... Uh, because remember, uh, his father, I think, made money with a whole bunch of government side contract. contracts. So much money that he owns a private island. Yep. He also has oh, a yeah. like, yeah, he also has yes. a where he goes like, well, I was relaxed like the working class man on this private island. And I'm like, going, no, stop, stop, not one of us. You're just, you're just like that girl in uh, Pope's song from the 1990s common people. You can believe whatever you want. You, you just have to call your little daddy or mommy and you know, they'll just pull you out of there. Yep. Uh. The mosquitoes are a pain in the ass. Yeah. Aren't yeah. just like real life. <laughs> <laughs> 
But you'll notice the common thread between all these people. Because all these people have very conservative parents, but they're not, they're, they're, like, well, we don't know about any of that. They also could be the, 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 uh, uh, the globalist conservative type, not the religious conservative type, or the libertarian conservative type, or the anything like that. They're all the globalists. Yeah. They're the rich fat cats that want to profit on the international business. Yep. Well, actually, I think a better term is... Since they're neocon entrepreneurs, they're not really entrepreneurs in that sense. They're making money off of businesses that have a lot of government cash, aka your money taken from your wallet to in other words, your business. Yeah, yeah, uh, it is. Yep. All right, I'm gonna have to go crash out. Yeah. I'll talk to you. Could it be? Could it be? Actually, that's not surprising. Hey, take care, Bill. Yeah. Yep. Although but, eventually when they reach adulthood, it usually sinks in that their parents were right the whole damn time. But I mean, in the case of the sort of parents for these guys, as you said, they're rent seekers, not real entrepreneurs. And entrepreneurial kids usually do one or two things. They either blow the family fortune because of the found it, or they go off and do it. But if you're like a rent seeker, Neocon is a business that's heavily tied into defense or whatever, you're Chances Your main priority then becomes get my kids out of here so they can fuck everything up. Yeah. That's kind of it. I'm debating whether or not I should continue watching your own business. Up to you. I was watching it because I was watching these reviews of it. Did you throw it? It was not really weird. And I decided to watch it to sort of kind of get into the mindset of the things instead of like you know, just watching reviews without watching the show. And I was like, hey, I might as well watch a bad anime to see how not what not to do, right? So. <laughs> I'm up to episode three, and I'm debating on whether or not I should continue or not. Either through it's it's a combination of either I'm very, I'm curious to see how it turns out, but also I'm also starting to find the plot unbearable. But I also like complaining about the plot. So I don't know what to do. It it sounds uh, like something you need to watch with a friend that you two can banter over it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a all, difficult show to keep myself. Oh, well, here's the other thing, too. I'm not a fan of Digibro stuff. Because... Well, here's the problem with Digibro. He doesn't do reviews. He does the sort of stuff that the style of the critic does. He's like, hey, non review. This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. Oh, but that's super good. It's not really bad. It's like, no. You're going to make a decision. Either this was a bad show for particular reasons. Or well, the thing is, here's the thing, there are certain qualities in the book that can be good and other qualities that can be bad, so he, it's a pros and cons. He's not really reviewing things, he's supposed to be analyzing this, the story and such like that. But if you analyze it, he's pretty much stated that he doesn't do like traditional Well, he started off doing that, and I think as of late, he's been trying to do more neutral sleaze stuff, because I think it smacks of him trying to do that whole positivity thing, which just seems I, I a little I forced. I don't see that, actually, but, I mean, are you talking about compared to this or I think we just ripped into the fucking show, like, that show needed to be ripped into? Yeah, or the one where he did a really good job of the uh, Asterix War comparison, seeing another light novel show with the exact same plot. That was a really good one. Like, that's the sort of analysis I kind of see. Most of the time, I feel that he's trying to be all super positive and all 
Positivity, I think, is because he's focusing more on, like, not the doing reviewing bad anime all the time and trying to review a lot of good anime and explaining why those shows are good and try to put a spotlight on them and stuff like that. Because I notice a lot of, so a lot of, like, popular critics tend to lean on doing bad movies. Like, the reason, main reason why Nostalgia Critic is such a hack is because all his nostalgia reviews are bad movies. Well, most of them are. There are. Yeah, most of them are. Bad movies. He, well, I don't think he. Is... I don't think he. He's capable of reviewing a good movie. He did like Secret of Nim. No, no, he is capable of doing it, but the problem is his shtick has degraded to such a point that he can't actually review something as is. He's got to do it with a crappy skip. He's got to do yeah, it with skip a reaching. And God, I, I mean, look, there was nothing wrong with the occasional funny comedic bit in the review because it sort of broke things up. But, but as I say, the problem is he's doing all of this. He's trying to make something negative, but at the end of it all, he says, "Oh, but it's also kind of good at the same time too." And I'm like, "Okay, dude, stop, stop." stop. Well, that's, 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 you want a really bad example of it, and it sucks because I otherwise like the reviewer. But like, I otherwise like the guy's videos. What's did in more recent blockbuster buster? That was it. Oh god. Oh. Yeah, like oh. his skits are terrible. Otherwise, it's interesting to go on. It's just you can't do an interesting skit yeah, because it's always some stupid variant too. Garbage where it's like I don't I don't I don't I don't quite completely agree with your I mean I suppose he's got a more neutral but I still I still like really really enjoy uh, uh DJ Bro because to me it's like a it's fun to I mean I draw a lot and stuff and I like listening to people talk about like things like the animation or something or how story works or how this develops and that and stuff and all that. Well, that was and I prefer that I prefer that way over the whole uh, widgets. Uh, I have a have a skit every minute. Yeah, yeah it really is yeah. a bit obnoxious. It, it is. But I will say this. Um if you want an example of the sort of standard that I'm sometimes working from, uh, that would be, uh, say, critics of the critics I used to read when I was younger uh, were folks like Pauline Kale. She had her own odd bag of tricks, but um, she was a very interesting reviewer when it came, uh, movie reviewer when it came to basically uh, popular pictures, art house pictures in the 70s and uh, mid 80s. And the other thing I would recommend if you can ever, well, you can easily buy it online on a uh, ebook reader, is uh, get yourself a copy of Harlan Ellison's Watching. That is a very, very entertaining uh, book of movie review. So if I'm saying that, you know, the standard of what I sometimes see is some critics do is it's kind of based off of the sort of stand high standards kind of like great reviewers from that. Yeah, basically that and you can have to figure your fingers on the internet to scout for this. But see if you can ever find like a downloadable archive of original uh, film threat run uh, from the 90s. Because that was also like a really awesome magazine when it came to those sorts of uh, pop culture stuff and Asian trash cinema. So, I mean, it's, it's just a nice dance. It's, it's, it's just that I, I get I what just, people are trying to do, but I just feel that the forced positivity thing sort of takes it away from it. I, well, I, I, I can't tell if he's trying to force positivity back, to be fair. So it's probably something I haven't noticed yet. But I do prefer, like, a lot of reviewers, like, I, it used to be that I would listen to a lot of reviewers, but now I only been, like, 
I've been more interested in people saying something new about the same thing as opposed to uh, repeating the same things over and over and over again. And, uh, oh shit, there's a video I wanted to share with Ray and you guys because this guy, this, this cartoon reviewer, pretty much sums up the fact that most of the people who review cartoons on uh, the internet sucks. Talking about uh, Mr. E. Mars review. Oh, Mr. Mars review was talking about all the cartoon reviewers and comparing them to the anime tubers and how the anime tubers have like a million subscribers and shit like that. But the cartoon reviewers barely ever reach like 300,000 subscribers. That's the largest. Uh, well, and uh, on top of that, there's way more shit cartoon reviews than there is. And there well, should be. I would argue that part of the problem might be that when it comes to just cartoon viewers, um, in theory, actually, honestly, most anime reviewers could also be cartoon reviewers. Yeah. Because it's the same for like, like, the ones are like that. But the big thing is, is that for anime reviewers, it's just so much more content in history and more recorded stuff about the industry to plow through. Uh, because when it comes to, say, trying to do a lot of Western cartoons, there's like wholesale markets of artists that are, like, if you don't know the language, uh, you might not know that there's a whole other art form sitting in certain countries like in Eastern Europe. Yeah, yeah like, if you go, go, one of the biggest, one of the biggest and one of the most annoying one that's popular for some godforsaken reason, and I used to sort of kind of like his videos until they got clear of a watch, that is Mysterious Mr. Answer. Yes, uh, that's that. I've heard God. stories about that guy. He's <sighs> whack. Oh God, he, he's like <coughs> one of the worst. The irony is that I can only count two cartoon, two three cartoon reviewers that I can say that are actually kind of good. They could be better, but they're they're good. At, they're they been, they're they're very good at what they do. And they review very good. Like uh, Pat Peace is all right. He's not the best. He kind of sounds stoned most of the time in reviews. So he doesn't really sound <laughs> as and yeah, he doesn't really sound as analytical that he should sound. So I feel like his reviews. Just, uh, he uh, talk he just sounds like a guy who's like, yeah, remember this cartoon that I watched? Oh man, I used to be at my friend's house watching this cartoon, and uh, we used to think that that character was saying, kicking butts, or something like that. Oh my god, I hope. <laughs> but anyway, and then, uh, and then you have, like, Robot Buddies. She's very good. I think Robot Buddies is coming up to be a good reviewer. But you got a lot of shit. Like, Mr. Mr. this this white asshole cartoon lover or something like that who fucking does these hot candies. Most of his hot candies is about how bad he might go is. Uh, High guy rules. Are what are your thoughts on these semi colored R? These semi colored R is actually one of the good ones. <laughs> I will say he is one of the good ones because he does actually go into the analytical. I may mean, disagree with some parts of the experience, but he actually does go into the deep. You know, criticism. He's the only person criticizing Steven Universe. I don't quite agree with the weight of his criticism, but I agree that he's so far been the only person that's been sort of kind of analytical about it in any shape or form. But then he mixed it with, uh, and then he mixed it with national socialist propaganda. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yeah that is hilarious. But, uh, there's, uh, Alpha 
something show, that one guy, he's actually really good. Because he, he doesn't really do reviews, as he just does, like, character analysis. He talks about, like, the writing and cartoons and stuff like that. But most of it is just like, you know, there's no... There's no, there's no digital, there's no digital, there's no uh, um, iPad work in this cartoon preview, so well, iPad um, work is the fucking best. There's, there's no internet fucking... Well, 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 as I say, the big difference is, with anime, it's been such a, it's such a big industry, and it's been around for so long, there's just so many titles you can train and cut your teeth on, and there's just so much better documentation about yeah. that animation industry than other ones, simply mm -hmm. because, as I say, if you wanted to, if you had a really good, like one of the best uh, web pages I've ever seen about animation, because the guy does actually look at stuff from the West and, and from the East, is a page called Anapages. Um, <laughs> I might just dump it in the chat in a bit, but you know, the type of analysis that I see there is this is a guy who he knows a couple of other languages, so he knows about stuff that's done in Eastern Europe, uh, some of the stuff that was made in also the former Soviet bloc. Oh, you know what? That's the other issue. Western cartoon who's the Western cartoon reviewers stick only to American cartoons. That's one of the biggest like thing ever. When you think of Western cartoons, they should, uh, it feels like they don't review, like, French cartoons or bring up anything else or talk about this or that and stuff like that. It just seems well, like... Well, not a lot of French cartoons really make it outside of France. Like, yeah, there's but some, it's just such like as, um, a, lot of, a lot of the stuff that a friend of mine has though. shared with me is stuff I've never seen before or stuff I've seen for the first time ever. Some of this stuff is dubbed in English and stuff. And I've never There's seen a cartoon sure. reviewer. Like, you know how, you know how like, an anime review is like, you know this anime you never heard of? I'm going to talk about it for 15 minutes to make you interested in anime. I see a lot of that, but I don't see a lot of, you know this cartoon you never heard of? Or this cartoon that fell off the way word or was cancelled too early? I'm going to discuss that. Pan Pizza does it sometimes. Even well, there's some French Japanese co productions that have made it over here, like um, Oban Star Racers being one of them. Yeah, it's a Oh, yeah. It's a and like it's like 31 is another one. And in that video, it's like the only reviews, the biggest reviews that only reviews, Teen Titans Go. Uh, complain about SpongeBob or uh, yeah, that's two big things. Keep trying to go and complaining about SpongeBob, and occasionally there's a Steven Universe uh, video here and there because they have to talk about Steven Universe. It's all modern cartoons, cartoons that everyone knows, so that when you see it in the thumbnail, you can easily click on. Yeah, well, you can just... say about about Titans Go. Dang it. There's not, um, there's nothing that's happening that already yeah. been said. That's the most annoying thing about it. It's like, uh, 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 I'm always, I'm all, you, y'all know that I always look up reviews, anime reviews, and cartoon reviews because I like stuff in the background. But I'm always constantly recommended all these cartoon reviewers, and most of their thumbnails is Teen Titans Go. <sighs> well, as I say once again, I think part of the problem, I think, with at least the a lot of the American reviewers is, as I say. They know one language, it's American, so they don't know what else is out there because they may not know the language or where to look it up. So that makes it difficult. Like, for instance, um, there's been some interesting stuff I've seen on some trackers that I may have to relocate again. Um, for instance, uh, do you know of the artist by the name of uh, Mobius, a.k.a. Uh, Jean, Jean Girard? No. Okay. So, uh... He is basically one of France's biggest, if not one of the best, Bondesen uh, slash comic artists from basically France slash uh, Belgium. And in uh, a couple of well, series I've been brought over here a few times, uh, uh, the Incal. And of course, uh, uh, the Blueberry comics, which happen to be uh, basically a comic, comics about a basically it's just a Western 
about a uh, sheriff who goes roaming around. And what's interesting is, you know, he used to be well known back in the 80s, especially in North America, amongst a lot of comic artists, because back then, a lot of comic artists used to, or at least a lot of comics readers, uh, used to be sort of well known because uh, basically places like uh, Heavy Metal uh, used to bring over European comic artists translated to America with a couple of you know, stuff edits, unity and crap like that. But um, also you had Marvel's Epic Comics, the creator of uh, which also brought over a lot of European comics as well. And eventually what ended up happening is that companies like Marvel stopped doing that once they started to refocus on their own IP back in the 1990s. And also because where is American comics? Uh, well, at least, sorry, I should say, like, the, the big two have an emphasis on their superhero comics where there's no creator ownership. Uh, they, you know, when it came to renegotiating and republishing a lot of uh, Mobius' work, uh, they basically refused to pay uh, his contractual fees because basically everywhere else in Europe, you know, uh, he owns the rights to his work. <laughs> but, you know, in America, they only wanted to pay the one time fee that they could pay for the war for the 80s back at Marvel, and they just did not want to reprint the work again. And I do think that some of those works were reprinted by uh, Dark Horse at this point. But reprints are a limited run. But, but they're affordable. But one big series that uh, he was well known for back in the 70s and 80s was a series of these silent scripts with occasional dialogue called Arzak. Which is basically just this the adventures of this guy who's on the back of this white, like, surreal looking uh, uh, pterodactyl. And he's like this bird writer who goes on a whole bunch of these weird, sort of surreal, silent little adventures that are that were just kind of like these deep little blue pieces. And he inspired a lot of American artists back at the time. Now, because a lot of this stuff has been sort of isolated and it's all in France or, you know, whatever, and most Americans don't tend to bother learning secondary languages, it means that there's a whole... This artist who used to be well-known back in the 80s is now no longer known by anybody or is even mentioned about by anybody when they're talking about comics. Um, it's much like how... Uh, one of the things I've been trying to work on this week has been reviews to see if you know, Q can like, put it on the site on uh, Thorgal. Because that's a series that's now getting uh, reprinted back into English again. It's reprinted in the... Uh, it's translated into English in the uh, sort of mid-80s, around 1987 ish or so, by the Donner Company. And basically, it's like a series of adventures about a... basically a... Atlantean guy from outer space uh, basically gets marooned on Earth as a kid and ends up growing up amongst a bunch of Vikings and goes on a bunch of unusual adventures because he's kind of a man who's not of this Earth. So he gets sort of played around with by a lot of Norse gods and stuff. And he goes on a whole bunch of really interesting adventures. And he eventually ends up raising a family throughout all of this as well. And it's just... It's like it's one of those things that doesn't get discussed about very often in the West because, once again, not a lot of people know where to look for it. Because if you don't know French, it would be hard for you to know that this series sort of kind of exists. I can like, 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 not even like analytical videos, but it's like, you know, someone to, you know, talk about something no one's ever heard of before and, and, and shit to get more awareness towards it. Like, well, the funny, well, the you funny... know what's the interesting thing that uh, also that I brought up that I didn't think about was that 
I see a lot of an analytical anime videos about a particular anime or something like that about its, like, its story structure when it was made or the behind the scenes stuff and all that. But I've never seen, like, I don't know, a video talking about the original uh, uh, Dexter's Laboratory run or a video talking about the, like, like, the Argoyles, the animated series. Oh, yeah. It's you know what? and stuff like that. Or fucking, uh, you know what that is? A lot of stuff. Okay, you know what that is? Um, what? Because they're all here. Yeah, no one wants yeah. to, it, 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 it's something no one wants to talk about because it's not uh, relevant. Sunday it's not relevant because you can't watch it without either owning DVD or, or yeah, Yaha. Well, it's on YouTube for the entire series. Yaha. <laughs> that doesn't, that hasn't stopped people from looking up obscure anime. Crunchyroll. Like, not not just like not just gargoyles. Crunchyroll doesn't fucking, have a lot of obscure anime. Like, though. like why do people like Young Justice? Is Young Justice as good as people say it is? Like there's like you I know, enjoyed what I there's saw another it. there's a, there's another thing that I was like like I didn't even think about at first and now I'm thinking about is that um even for like cartoons that we think are great, they still have certain flaws that you can sort of kinda like, you know, analyze and point out and shit like that. But I guess because with Western cartoons, it's a lot easier to, uh, and I'm not saying it like, you know, just sucks or anything like that, but I also have to realize that it's easier to, uh, to call something like you know, just a masterpiece because what other Western cartoons you get is like it. Like, there's a million anime that's better than the other ones. There's a million anime that's better than Gargoyles. There's like, I, I, not I'm a million. Just, I, I, I'm, I'm probably hyperbolic. hyperbolic. Yeah, well, you're well, being well, hyperbolic. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, I, Dozens, I, I, maybe, I but. Say, yeah. I would but, say that, uh, uh, old, I was like, Oban Star Racers is better than, than Young Justice for a whole variety of subtle reasons. Yeah. But, Oh, I but, no, I'm not saying that it sucks that or anything like that. It's just more like, uh, uh, it's been forever since I've seen Obon Star Race. The problem, the problem with not having something. That was a good French something, Japanese co-production. The problem with not having something and getting and getting it finally is that we become less critical of it, so it can lead to uh, instances of stagnation or like studios just going like, that's all you can do with that, or like you know. Like, when, when, when you got, like, something like Steve Universe, right? Some people do that as, like, the first of its kind to do that, or to do that. That's why it's got to be sort of hard for that. Obviously, that's not completely true. But, uh, 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 because of that, because there's very little, like, critical analysis of it, that also means that there's no room for anyone to go, uh, uh, anyone to point out its flaws so that someone can go, I could do better or do something better than that. You know, because everybody just wants to be like, you know, something to be praised a lot. Everyone wants to just, you know, no one wants to, no one wants to, no one thinks, few people think about, I can do this better attitude, unless you're like a critic or something like that. Well, I would say the funny thing about uh, Steven Universe is it's Rebecca Sugar's attempt at trying to think that she can do a better Sailor Moon, except I think she doesn't understand what made Sailor Moon work at all. Uh, it's, it's, uh, let's put it this way. Uh, having read the original run of the manga, uh, TV, the original like TV first TV anime adaptation is basically they made it more of an action show for the guy. They wanted to get the guys in to make them buy the merchandise and crap. Oh, but it was still good. But it's still good, yeah, because there's just a lot of goofy, goofy charm, and just so many reaction images that have come out of that show. It's nuts. But I was going to say that in the case of the original manga, if you read it, it's a very interesting metaphor for motherhood uh, for each of the chapters. There's also there's also like parents and parents and girls. 
Oh, oh, they also on. complain about particular tropes of magical girls that try to subvert them and so forth. Like, Subversive. complaining that magical girl stories are star young women instead of young girls, instead of uh, Grim, you a You want to know why women, that is? Even though, even though said shows were already geared towards a young audience in the first place, that's what they were made for to begin with. So the magical girl genre is over and over and over again by pretty much the same guy. Like, Madoka Ma the guy behind Madoka Magica is also one of the other various other magical girl series. Well, well, actually, well, actually, even the magical girl genre as it was originally started, was always full of uh, weird, subversive stuff. Like the Minky Mono series? Like, it is a charming series until you realize there's a lot of dang things going on in that show. And, I mean, they were not afraid of doing risky things like, you know, having one of the plot points be that, you know, Mickey Moto sort of had the baton handed to another, uh, to another girl, because the original one died in a car accident after she achieved everybody else's dreams. Like, that is fucking dang, man, you know, for a kid's show. So, I mean, <laughs> the magic girl genre, well, well, hell, going back all the way to what some people consider the first magic series, um, by Asama Tezuka, uh, Princess Knight, that was considered pretty damn subversive in Japan back in its day. Like, a fairy tale story about a, you know, a girl who uses some weird curse can only be identified as a boy. Like, it's... <laughs> you know, so the whole that is really subversive. It's like, well, subversive in the same way that a lot of fairy tales are kind of weirdly subversive. They're trying to give you like certain types of warnings to the stories they're trying to tell. Yeah. So I mean, it's like, but the thing is, I think with Steven Universe, is it's trying to be subversive for all the wrong kind of mixed up reasons like it's like it doesn't it's like rebecca sugar saw sailor Moon when she was young but she didn't quite understand what made it work and so she's trying to run it through this weird kind of socialist lens and it all comes off as broken and wonky and Mm, it's not something. that she doesn't know how it works, it's more that she's, uh, uh, she watched it, enjoyed it, and then went to a different study to find out certain aspects of it were problematic, and decided to make an unproblematic version of it. But in doing so, she made it more problematic. That's I mean, the every weird... American anime ever in the Tumblr's made. <laughs> you know what it's... She... It's pretty inferior to all the magical girl anime it's even trying to copy. You know what's the funniest thing about uh, the real big plot reveal that you do kind of get from watching it from the, the plot, the main plot of the TV universe, is that the gem from being a matriarchal society, it's a fucking dystopia. Pretty much. And, you know, an entire society. That's funny. <laughs> an entire society is basically Rebecca Sugar. I wonder if it's her subconscious telling you, uh, Rebecca, an entire society, one by one, seems to be, would lead to nothing but a complete dystopia. You it know? pretty much would, yeah. I wonder if anyone's ever analyzed exact, like, how. Oh, the, women would the, be more peaceful, the, yeah, until that dream went. And women in charge basically accounted for 15% more wars overall. Than oh, women, women were in charge. Are terrible. I wonder yes. why anyone ever broke the with some analytical aspects of the uh, uh, there are the way the social films like hierarchy runs and how they view people, how they turn people into the good the exceptions are few and far between. I can only think of three. You know what they remind me of? A lot of a society of stuck up dicks. 
thing, but that could be really good to tell. Oh, come on! This makes me really question what kind of shit tastes you have. I think every egg that is tasting Starfire. I think every egg that is tasting Starfire. If I didn't, I wouldn't be a cartoonist. I have to take things seriously. If I didn't, I would be an artist. Yes, Stephen Steven Universe. I take everything that I watch seriously. Well, if I don't, how will I be a creative person that can work on my own stuff if I can't take the things that I watch seriously? Go back to the roots of what inspired those cartoonists, mythology, folklore, fairy tales, etc. He's asking me to read. Even art books. It means tell you to stop. Fish. I create a visual video though. Oh, I'm mythology sorry. will help you get an idea of how to handle storytelling. And it will also give you inspiration for characters and archetypes. But I was also uh, Yes. Mythology inspires many of like the things. Oh, okay. Sailor Moon is loosely inspired by Greek mythology, so is Saint Seiya. Uh, yeah, but mythology. Yes. It's a major influence on much of literature. And the other thing I was going to recommend is some more classical art books. No. Classical art books, you have to be specific. Um, some impressionists, you know, the things like artwork that. from the Middle Ages as well. Oh yes, definitely. And not just drawings, but also sculptures, stained glass windows. I used to have a hard history class. I remember that class. As far as um, the importance of the on um, art and story skills, um, I've been listening to him work a lot, but um, Jordan Peterson actually has a whole lecture. It's, uh, what's it called? Um, Maps of Meaning is a lecture Maps of Meaning. he does yes. all the time. Yes, and, that is and he talks about mythology all about the time mythology. and the psychology yes. of it. Yeah, I highly recommend it. A lot of them are a lot better than what's coming out these days on TV. Like, I mean, you know the... What do you think of Guardians of the Galaxy, Grim? I know, I found a book that's kind of similar. Well, do I think that Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah, like if I gave you, if I told you, you to read this, it's like Guardians of the Galaxy. You give me a my Guardians of the Galaxy. So we're going to check out Rocket Raccoon. Check out uh, Northwest Smith by uh, Sam Moore. It's Northwest Smith. It's kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy, except more focused. Like it doesn't have a full five, five person team, but it's main characters, someone similar to Star Wars. Like I think that this might have been one of the, the stories that you might have inspired. inspired. Maybe think yeah. about Star Lord and I'm thinking like, he doesn't have any like, it was like, with, if, if, the, uh, if, if they ever team up with the Avengers, he's gonna be like, he's gonna be like, uh, Iron Man level, isn't he? 
Let me check on that. But I'm going to comment a lot of the stuff that the Guardians see uh, encounter is a lot more advanced than Iron Man's Iron Man stuff. So it's like, how does he stack up with Iron Man? It's clear that Mara is more powerful than she. <laughs> Gee, what did I do? Is it a GI one to fire? That's the terrestrial, I think. You wonder who could be behind this. Actually, Star Lord has some powers. Um, Star Lord is kind of similar to Captain America in terms of like his strength and such, because he's only half human and he's half some kind of superhuman alien thing. Oh. Then he's got a bunch of them. But it's all just like, you know, human strength. He doesn't have any, like, you know, over. I'm, I'm, I'm in like the, the Marvel character database thing. <laughs> I think Captain America is supposed to be like peak human ability, but... He's a little bit beyond that because it's a bit difficult for him to get drunk, for instance. There's that. Given his metabolism. They got him. Yeah, they have a peak human. Um, peak human ability and uh, accelerating. They just announced rocket record. Nice. I need to watch this video real quick. We are right back. This is turned into a Toho game. What's going on? <laughs> uh, Toho doesn't have spinning around like this. No, it's turned into no, no, no. Toho. Toho does to do. Here's the thing. Um, it's turned into the top down Should perspective of um, Contra 3 I'm the really Alien sick Wars. I'm doing the, the first part of the level over and over and over again. If you want to take a break here, you can. Okay. Here's the way I would look at it um, it's, it's not a Toho game because a Toho game would give you more control and <laughs> uh, you would not be slipping off the edges mysteriously. <laughs> Yeah. And you would be able to better dodge the bullets and the bugs. And your As I said, the top down for perspective of Contra 3 The Alien Wars. I don't know, I could play something else if you want to watch. Sure. Okay. Well, no, I can't. It's just then I can't see as much. You know, because then I wouldn't be able to see as much of, uh, of the the field. Okay, should I play... What system should I play on? The... Should I play another PlayStation game? Up to you. Yeah. Um, do you have the translation patch version of Front Mission 2? I don't think so. Let me see what I got. Okay.
WikiLeaks is all over it. What? What's up? The Macron so leaks. You, yeah, you know how uh, you know how archive.org uh, vers- like flips out on takedown notices. Yeah. Well, someone issued a takedown notice in archive.org took it down, but WikiLeaks then posted a a link to the archive.is link. <laughs> and now they yep. created a collection of magnet links instead. So now and oh, on, on, on GitLab and then archive or GitHub rather and then archived. It's, is it GitHub.io? Is that the real GitHub? And then archived their GitHub page with the magnet links. So now there's like oh, it's going to be practically impossible to take it down. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know that WikiLeaks is on top of things. Oh yeah. They, they improved on Aqua. Whoa, this is this is better than the original. What you playing, right? Our type. Oh, cool. Which version? DX. It's the original, except they redid it. For what system? Oh man, I haven't played this game in years. Oh cool. I think they made it a little easier too. We'll see. Oh my gosh! A shooter that remembers to have power-ups! <gasps> Remember <laughs> those? Well, there's a couple of games that have had uh, so power-ups as of late. Uh, no, that's their regular scoring sort of game. But so whole games have Oh uh, no, Dodon Pachi does have power-ups. But I was thinking more along the lines of uh oh, what was it? Uh, Zero Wing? It? No, not Zero Wing. Zero Wing was great. I was gonna say, uh, I'm talking about a recent uh, shooter game that was released this year, which I have. Um, not as to breed, but another game that was ported over from that originally came out on the Xbox. So when you're piloting a mech and it's like horizontal and 3D, and it's got like where you can get the weapons off of uh, your enemy guys and you power them up. Um, cool. I remember that there was this one Japanese shoot up that gave you an option to hold down a button to use as a sword to cut shit, and blood fly out from the enemies that you kill. And um, it was loosely based off of uh, military history in Asia. And a lot of these enemies had their own flags with their names on it. I forget what the game is called though, but man, was it fun. What kind of game is it? A shmup. I'll have to look at a shmup database well, for it. Well, I back what I said about this being easier. <laughs> <laughs> this game looks beautiful, by the way. Yeah, it actually looks better than the original. Longer loading times, though. <laughs> Nilk says, "Result of novice stage, you fail." Nilk's watching. Yes. Yeah, Nilk periodically watches rain streams. Okay, one more run, and then after, once I die in this one, I'll probably stop. He frequently appears in the chat. I like how they actually show the um, aircraft falling to the ground. A nice little touch. Yeah.
Do a freaking arc beam or something. Yeah, that's the laser. Oh, that's actually that's the other neat thing. Um, seeing all the the games by um, what's that? Have, you, have anyone ever played Hurricane of the Far Stray? Uh, that's a shooter that came out recently on Steam. I think it's also on GOG as well. Mm, but yeah, it's a give me a link later. Yeah. I know there's a little piece of armor blow off things and fall to the ground too. Yep. Yeah, that's new. What would happen if Rain were to try a Toho game? I've already played most of them. I know y'all recommend oh, all you have? this stuff, but it's not like I can go find this um, stuff. Have you done any streams of those or no? I could. Hmm. Or, How good are you at Toho? Uh, depends on which one. <laughs> Fair enough. What difficulty do you tend to play on usually? Regular. Of course. So you're not crazy enough to play on Lunatic? I'm not good enough. <laughs> Fair enough. But it would be fun to watch you play a Toho game every now and then. Oh, that's that. Uh... Good night, everyone. Good night, Good stream. Good night.